Okay, so this morning I woke up and I opened up Instagram and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> uh, this guy, Jeff Yarlett, was basically the catalyst for the actual breezeway because he wanted to film a pilot for a show called Building Paradise. Even like when I moved into this house, uh, Bamboo Ben, like legendary, world-renowned tiki bar builder, like commercial tiki bars, home tiki bars, any kind of tiki bar stuff. Uh, he can build it. He was like, you need to turn the breezeway of your house into a tiki bar. And I was like, well, you know, I might want to resell the house. I don't want to like get in too deep. Meanwhile. <laughs> so anyway, it was Bamboo Ben's original concept to turn the breezeway of my house into a bar. And then I just named it the breezeway because sounds tropical, right? Like, I thought that was kind of funny that the breezeway was literally the breezeway to my house. So he said, if you pay for materials, I will build this tiki bar in your house on the condition that we can use all of the footage for a pilot of a show called Building Paradise. And I was like, wait, you're gonna give me a free tiki bar and you potentially put me on TV? Okay, yeah, okay. What? Wait, what's the downside? No downside. And then the footage was lost for years and years. There was like a, a very cut down version of it on YouTube that only featured our segment for like a couple of seconds. And then it was mostly other stuff, which had nothing to do with the build here. I just thought that that footage was kind of gone forever. And maybe for good reason, because I mean, I think I've gotten much better on camera since then. Uh, a little more confident. And it's really weird because it features my ex-girlfriend who lived with me here for about four or five years. And uh, you know, this memory's tied to that too, so. So this morning I was sitting in the kitchen and I was watching it and I probably got three minutes in and I went, I should watch this with you. So I'm gonna do a reaction video to that original build of the breezeway. Come along with me. Do -do 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 -do. Some music, okay, let's get into it. I will tag the location of the original video also in the description below. I guess now's a good time to say uh, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Normally we do cocktail videos, we have fun guests on, like my lovely uh, chick friend, Pinna Palmer, YouTuber Justin Scard, all kinds of people, Bamboo Ben. Bamboo Ben, the builder of the original Breezeway, was also on the show too, so. That's what we do normally on the show. If you're just like stumbling upon, what is this guy talking to the camera for? Now, let's get into the video. Okay, looks like footage of Huntington Beach. We're oh, Newport Beach, Newport okay. Beach, There's me and my ex-girlfriend sitting in front of my 62 Thunderbird. Meet homeowners. And there's my Gretsch. Meet, Meet Matt. Matt, a graphic designer by- That's my real name, by the way. I am a retro collector, true. Dinah DeRosa, out in front of our house, my house, I guess, with my buddy Eric's 54 Chevy. It's like, it's like chopped and shaved and airbagged. It's like one of the best custom cars I've ever seen. Okay, so there's the breezeway all bare there. You can see the surfboard rack that I built. I was surfing every day, a couple times a day even. Dinah and I started a board bag company called The Cruel Sea. You can see our, some of our board bags on surfboards in the breezeway. That looks like a Bosco Tiki there, but that is a Tiki that I carved to try to see like what it would take to carve like Bosco. It's tougher than you think. The nuances of a Bosco Tiki are apparent that he went to Art Center. This area is basically my kitchen to the left and then to the right goes on to the garage there. That door is still there and that is an original diamond hole window from 1962, I think this house was built. And then uh, I thought I was being super retro with the tulip table and those chairs from Ikea. And uh, you can see a lone pufferfish hanging from the center of the ceiling. And the window, you can see a window into the kitchen, which eventually would get wiped out too, in car talk deleted. This little patio area, it's comfortable, but it's just very drab, kind of lackluster. Wow, that is wild to see. Still that shirt, <laughs> it's from the 60s. Um, man, I look like I'm 13 years old there. It lacks excitement or interest. And she looks gorgeous. But you can see the inside of the house there. God, I, I seem so awkward in that. Be this tropical paradise. So it'd be a nice way to come home every day. Yeah. To pass this. through little tropical. Tropical paradise, yeah, <laughs> it'd be great. And at the same time, every time I was out there building on the breezeway, she was like, spend time with me. And I'm like, I gotta build the breezeway. Oh, maybe I shouldn't put that in this video. I don't know, we're gonna get real, okay? She's engaged to another dude, so it's fine. Fucking airplanes. I certainly don't want this to be a rehash of my relationship video. <laughs> 
So there's Bamboo Ben loading up some bamboo. It looks like at Frank's Cane and Rush in Huntington Beach. Second generation craftsman and a master of all things His craftsman. father was Eli Headley, who built places like the Aku Aku. He was a very prolific tiki bar builder in the golden age of tiki. So I knew Bamboo Ben pretty well before we shot this thing. Like we had, uh, I don't know what year this is, but the early days of the tiki revival, there was a kind of a small group of people who all knew each other. It was like a bit of a family, you know? In the reflection there, you can see a tangerine tree that was replaced by the Breezeway Lagoon. My dog Astro used to climb that tree to eat tangerines, I swear. Crazy dog. For sure. And then ben looks so young there. Doing some kind of volcanic water feature. Volcanic over water feature, yeah. uh huh. Cool. That'd be really cool, yeah. yeah. Those are our two main things. So, I mean, what do you as the expert awesome. have in mind? Yeah, that sounds really awesome. Um, I would like, um, maybe we're gonna make all this off-white disappear. Right. That would be great. Make the off-white disappear. We'll a nice yeah, bar yeah. here, a little portable bar. Uh, behind it, we we'll like bar. a coat. Interesting. Yep. Nice. Bring it down and around. Break it up helps, the wall a little bit. Helps to break it up a little bit. Maybe yeah. use some uh, bamboo matting stained darker on the bottom and maybe some lahala matting up top. Mm -hmm. Behind the bar. La matting, like I think his original intention was very kind of beach beach bar, kind of tiki bar. That was kind of his style at the time. And um, I wanted to bring in like atomic, kind of like Palm Springs vibes to it. Diana and I used to go to Palm Springs all the time. We would stay at the Del Marcos. Okay, so every night I was carving trim for the whole place and I wanted to make sure that you know, I want to make sure that I had a big hand in this, but at the same time, I was working full time at Hurley Surf Boards, Surf Designs, Surf Surfwear, Hurley. You know Hurley. Everybody knows Hurley. So I would come home on my lunch breaks, check on their progress. It was like real disheartening to watch this whole thing go down while I was at work, like, you know, working. I'd come home and I'd be like, "Dude, what did you? You guys did so much." Yeah, it was kind of a kind of a bummer, but um, I don't know. It was. It's fun to watch it like this way. So the bamboo lattice they're putting up right now uh, is definitely still here. There's a tiki that I carve. to curse at it apparently. Commercial break. Could have been a fun show if they would have picked this up. Okay, now we're back. It's a pelican. The build, and Bamboo Ben arrives bright and early. Ugh. Bamboo Ben with his bamboo suitcase. With Matt off to work, Dinah and Ben get started on the bar. <laughs> they line up four boards that will make up the bar top. So they're building the bar now, and I ended up selling this bar years later because we had to make way for a new Breezeway bar. But it was it was great for what it was at the time. These, and there was some glue. Those are biscuits? These are called biscuits. Why do they call them biscuits? Well, you can eat them. Uh, no Give thanks. it a try. Dinah thought she was so funny. <laughs> Let's just stick them in the bar. Yeah, we will. <laughs> so building the bar top there. Once the cuts are made, the biscuits are glued into place. Then the boards are lined up at the joint and clamped together to ensure a tight fit. That's Ape, that's a Crazy Owls band, Ape playing in the background. So Ben sets the bar top in the sun singing, to speed uh -huh. up the process. Let that dry for a while. There's my lime tree in the background. The lime tree has since grown gigantic. Ben and Dinah start in the lava flow water feature. Okay, so there's the lava flow waterfall thing. Is that right there? No! Oh man, if, if Ben would have just put up plastic first before the wire. Oh dude, that thing leaked like a bastard the first night that we turned it on. It's because the, the hoses were spraying back behind it. Ben has since like become an expert at water features, but water is so tough because if you give it an opportunity to escape, it will find its way. Okay, so they're laying some cement. It's literally cement and sand. Just lay a little bit on there. That's it, just a little here, a little there. When I came home at lunch that day, I was just like, dude, look at what you're building. And Dinah had a lot of fun building this. Now that the lava is starting to flow, so are Dinah's ideas. We're gonna try and have some misting and fog around it, make it look a little more eerie, some red lights shining okay. out of it. So hopefully it turns out pretty cool and excited. Okay, so you can see the diamonds on the wall. That was the idea for the back of this thing. Like the back bar would be a very like simple, Palm Springs 
like tiki modern kind of aesthetic. So Ben's putting up all this um, particle board so that we can nail stuff into it. Which makes it the perfect time for Matt to come home from work. I still have that sun shirt. Are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> they kind of coached me on like what to say. It just it doesn't look like anything yet. It's just a little bit. So they, they have been showing me how to route trim, and in reality, all the trim had already been routed by me. They wanted just to make it look like I was just a, uh, you know, a homeowner, an unsuspecting homeowner. Oh, look at that. We'll pile it up with all the redwood strips. Okay. And, uh, start drawing. Okay. And start routing. Okay. Since the breezeway design requires over 30 pieces of wood trim, Matt has a lot of work ahead of him. So I was doing that every night till like late in the night. Damn, dude, the, look at the lime tree. It's so small. One, the pieces take shape and Matt's design and starts to come alive. I think it looks amazing. I think that's going to be great against the bamboo in the breezeway. Coming up next, the matting goes All of that's gone now. Ben starts on the bamboo trim. He coated all of the uh, carved trim. <laughs> and this is all in the course of like two days or something, two or three days. Into a tropical paradise. This is the most fun. There's a tiki that I carved in the background, which actually is that tiki right there. Ben, the three of you can have a little bit of fun once it's done. The first, second tiki I ever carved. It's time to turn up the heat and get moving as we start another day on Building Paradise. It really looks amazing. Like, I mean, it looks like a restaurant or something. See, even back then I was wearing hats. People were like, are you bald? No. What hats? Ben starts the day with a custom-made gift for Dinah. Dinah wearing a hula girl shirt. And a bamboo board. And I think she still has that, well, I mean, I don't know if she still has that, that purse that he made her, but um, she used to carry that around all the time. Strips of La Hala Matic. Perfect. Each piece of the bamboo board needs to be measured to 36 inches and cut by hand. Yeah, I don't want to get into our relationship, but um, <laughs> I think we both thought we were going to get married for a minute there. And uh, yeah, it's too bad how, you know, life goes how life goes. Pressed together with a little bit of resin. So it's just kind of this cool tropical vibe. Ben and Dinah apply glue to each piece of So all of that Lahala matting is still up on the walls right behind the camera. And actually, yeah, kind of to the to the left of that, all the wood there, it's still the same Lahala matting that Ben put up. But this part we're cruising along pretty good. I like it. It's good to see the progress. Weird to see. Ben splits bamboo on the rip saw. There's got to be a jig you can build it. Split bamboo like that, right? Ben needs to make up some time. Oh, well, Ben's the pro. Because we're a little bit behind schedule and we need to get it going. Once the bamboo is cut to size, Ben lines it up to cover the seams between the wood panels. It's all nail gunned in place. So all of that stuff right there is gone now because we got rid of it and lifted up the roof. I love using the blowtorch. It's way less backbreaking than using the cement all day long. So this is a nice change. He's whacking out the nodes in the bamboo so that you can put it up without any like restrictions. Especially if you're trying to cover like a like a corner or something, you don't want those nodes there getting in the way. So Ben just drew out our first diamond. Um, we wanted to have three behind the bar. The diamonds, dude. And showcase some of our art that we've been collecting. Um, we're gonna probably paint them orange, have a little pop. This is wild to see the diamonds being created. Ben carefully cuts the diamonds, which will eventually be framed in with strips of bamboo. But before that happens- So he's cutting directly on that piece of um, particle board. And it looks like he has the, the blade set so that you could cut and not cut into that wood. That's Cool technique. So I carved all of that trim. Cutting and staining all of the wooden trim. I got a feeling I'm gonna be up to midnight tonight. And I was up to midnight almost every night in the backyard, like bumming out the neighbors. Talk about tedious. You feel like you got a million other things that you could be doing and you gotta paint. I was like, if I wear my hula girl shirt on this and then the show's picked up, we're gonna have national exposure. 
mean, I don't funny. know. Do we really need this? <laughs> if you were at a party, yep. right, and you rubbed against this. Uh -huh. See? Look at this. This is some bent bamboo bend shit right here. Getting me dirty for no reason. I'm putting a sealer coat on it right now, so that won't happen to his guests. This guy. It's okay with him, but you know. You yeah. gonna get my laundry bill. <laughs> There's my Econo line, before it was uh, painted blue. Dinah start day three with a little shopping trip. We're at Oceanic Arts today, and Oceanic we're Arts. Uh, buying tiki stuff for our new space. I still have that shirt and, too. And uh, Oceanic Arts is the place to do it. This uh, has been the uh, outfitter of tiki for uh, the last 50 years or so. Wow. I like these, I like that one a lot. Oh, that one would be perfect. Uh -huh. Hoping to find- It's so crazy to see Oceanic Arts like that. I'm like wondering if I can see anything that's in the breezeway now because I bought a lot at the, the closing sales. That mask, dude, that mask is right there. A bunch of stuff to really make the, the space cool. Let's go. Okay, and this is the Hula Girls playing now. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's easy to have a good time at Oceanic Arts. <laughs> but with the long day ahead of them, that's Matt nice. and Dinah have to get what they came for and get back to the build. I like the really cool shape of that one. Okay, so maybe we can try. I'm like looking at the lamps going, is that Capiz lamp? That Capiz lamp? Yay, Might you. be. Oh man, <laughs> Bob giving us the uh, that lamps right there. Everyone's expectations. That's really cool. So that's a mug shelf that we're installing. You can see it's up, up there. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. I just got goosebumps. I feel great. Commercial break. This is wild watching this. Oh, we're back. Okay. <laughs> Three days ago, Matt and Dinah began transforming their breezeway into a tropical paradise. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Master craftsman Bamboo Ben has provided the design and expertise needed to make their dream room a reality. <laughs> now with just one full day left, they'll have to pick up the pace so the in order to finish in time for the unveiling party tomorrow night. We're just gonna pre-cut them all, we're gonna lean them up, we're gonna come through and bust them out. Bam, 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 bam. All right. Cool. Dinah starts day three with a little paint touch-up as Bamboo Ben prepares to start. Those doors are still painted that same brown that she painted them. The next step is we're gonna um, take some bamboo and put it in the corners over here, trim, and we're gonna trim the top. I'll tell you one thing about Bamboo Ben, he is excellent at working with bamboo. Like a machine putting that stuff up. So he goes in and trim it up. Within an hour, this thing's gonna be rocking. And I named the bars that he's built, but he's. it would probably be easier to name the bars that Bamboo Ben didn't build, because he's like, he's done just about every tiki bar there are, ex except for, you know, some built by Notch and some built by some other people, but Ben's, like, Ben's the guy. With the bamboo in place, Ben starts on Matt's routed trim. The bamboo and wood trim really bring the room okay. to life. So and the progress is getting Dinah and Ben really now. excited. This is exactly I do have a lot of that in my storage, um, my storage, what do you call it? My shed. <laughs> I just got goosebumps. I feel great. Woo! I really did, man. Look at my arm sticking up. The idea was to keep that window there so we could have like a pass through so you could pass drinks or food out to the, the patio, but obviously that, that looks much better than so I'd come home for lunch uh, from Hurley, help out as much as I could, and then run back to work. Collection. That's really cool. While Dinah and Ben get started on the bamboo grid, okay, like five Matt works on left. reviving an old tiki. It's fun watching this. It's fun going down, you know, memory lane. Okay. It's like a new lease on life for this tiki. Yeah, torching this tiki here. Rat. The bamboo poles are mounted in a okay. cross pattern to create a decorative grid. So they're putting up the grid for uh, the lamps. I got to the point where I was hanging so many lamps from that grid that Ben was like, uh, have, you, have you reinforced that thing, dude? You're kind of putting a lot of weight on there. And I think it's strong enough. Burning these nodes just really, really lightly. Okay, in hindsight, and I know we're getting this stuff up real quickly, but in hindsight, if we could have put junction boxes up on the ceiling for power, like hired an electrician to put junction boxes, painted them all black or whatever, that would have been, if you're building a tiki bar now, I would suggest, I don't know, what do they, they come in kind of like squares of four plugs. I would do one, two, three, four, five, six, 
So any, I put, you know, I put eight of those things up there because a tiki bar cannot have enough lamps. I wholeheartedly believe in that sentiment. And also it cleans up all the wires. I hate looking up. I've gotten used to it because it's my bar and I just go, oh yeah, you can see some plugs and stuff and it's like, whatever. But then when I go to somebody else's home tiki bar and I see a plug, I go, ha ha, which is like full double standard. <laughs> I totally recognize that. But that would be my biggest piece of advice for somebody building a tiki bar now. Burning the nodes. Okay, so it just brings out a little color. Adds a little more interest to the bamboo. Now it's time to build the centerpiece of the room, a retro style bamboo trim tiki bar. Okay, so here's the bar. Oh, that'll be really cool. Can we bring it in, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. yeah. So your tiki mask will be in the front. I sold that to a friend of mine and um, she still has it. I don't know what kind of condition it's in, but it's cool to see it. It was a very like retro styled kind of angular, angular bar. And the centerpiece was from Oceanic Arts. It was like a kawaii tiki or something. That's what Bob told me anyway. The paint and a few more nails. Loved the orange at the time was very much like a Palm Springs color, and you can still see the orange on that door right there. The work finished and the little daylight left. It's time for some last. Okay, making some lamps, and that lamp is still right there. A very sloppy lamp. They completed the build ahead of schedule. It was even time left for Matt to build his own tiki lamp. Build lamp, tiki lamp. Okay. It was okay. Matt and Dinah get ready for their big unveiling party, which includes a performance. Oh, there's my old bass player. Okay, so Dinah was a go-go dancer in my band also. There's the pond working. Dude, wild to see it. So we had a big party for the, the reveal. Bamboo Ben began a tropical makeover with homeowners Matt and Dinah. They were under a tight deadline, which meant long days. Just torching the, the just torching the bar on the glass I'm gonna there. be up to midnight okay. tonight. But even with My all garage. the hard work, there was still some time for fun. My garage is empty. So now it's time to see okay, the results some mugs of their up efforts on the shelf. as they unveil the finished space for their friends and family. Oh, dude, that's so rad. Putting the mask up. <laughs> with all their hard work behind them, the not so pretty breezeway has become a trophy. Look at that, glasses. it looks great. The bamboo, Aww. matting and trim have come together beautifully. It's everything Matt had hoped it would be. <laughs> it is so, it is so sparse compared to what the breezeway is now. A bunch of people came over to help at the end, Red Dodge. There's Adrian back there from uh, Desert Oasis Room, and my buddy Lance. Here's the volcano thing working. The diamonds are exactly how I wanted it. Look at the diamonds with Bosco art up on, on my other friends houses I mean this place is cool it's like it's you know it's swanky it's so you walk in and uh, it, it's really got a, a, a kickback James. vibe you know and it's, a, it's a fun place to hang out and I'm gonna be here a lot I am thoroughly impressed Red Dodge, with this bar this is model. a place I hang out Dug. every single day in my fact I'm gonna move my bed in here and live Hawaii, oh man Matt and Dinah's band the hula girls entertain their friends throughout the evening here's Dinah there's Judy Luck, Gary over there on guitar. Bamboo Ben. Everything that we conceptualized, Ben made happen and made beyond our expectations. That's nice. There's no way we could have done it without Bamboo Ben. He helped yeah. bring our concept and our design idea to life. There's no way we could have done this without him. When I see the, the clients smiling There's Judy and happy there. and all their friends enjoying themselves, it's really good. It's like perfect. Experience. And then the bartenders were uh, Kelly Merrill from uh, Trader Sam's. Build Paradise. They made me say that like eight times. Well, there it is. Oh. I wonder what my neighbors are thinking during that. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this look back at the uh, Breezeway build. Since then, you know, a lot of that original build has been added on to, but I certainly appreciate Bamboo Ben being the catalyst for the whole thing. The Breezeway has become a filming location. It's had a million pinup photo shoots in it. I've added to it and collected more and really turned this thing into something that I could never have dreamed it would become. We filmed almost 200 videos for Spike's Breezeway cocktail hour here in the Breezeway. My buddy Josh came over, we like, tore out a whole portion of the ceiling, 
turned it into a big A-frame. I've rebuilt the water feature a couple times. And, and I look at it now and I'm still like, Dude, we could still make it better. And it's not because the original version wasn't great, but, but it's like as time goes on, you want to add to change things. But for a bar build completed in like three days, I would say that, you know, it was a pretty successful build. And I would say that Bamboo Ben, at the very least, is in part responsible for my current career. So if it hadn't been for turning the space into a tiki bar, we wouldn't have the Breezeway Cocktail Hour. So thanks again to, to Ben. And uh, yeah, we're almost at 200 episodes. This episode is sponsored by Tiki Farm. Tiki Farm is the largest producer, manufacturer, and designer of custom tiki mugs. They've been around as long as I've been doing this stuff. Just one of the best possible companies to be sponsored by and true participants in the tiki scene since the very beginning. Join the Patreon to help this thing keep going. I really do appreciate any support that you can lend. If you do become a member, I will send you this enamel pin. You fucking cars, dude. If you do join the Patreon, I will send you this enamel pin and you'll get opportunities to buy merch before it goes on sale to anybody else because it always sells out and you'll help keep this thing going. It's pretty fun. And uh, I wanna thank Jeff Yartlett for posting this footage up online and allowing everybody to, to see it again because um, yeah, I thought it was lost to history. Like I thought it was lost to the, uh, to the memory banks. And to everybody who was involved in the original building of the breezeway, I wanna say thank you. And that includes Red Dodge, James Comfort, Mike Rouse, Bamboo Ben, of course, and of course, Dinah DeRosa. So, I think that's the show. What year was this? Hey Siri, send a text message to Bamboo Ben. What year did we shoot the Building Paradise thing? Question mark. Modern technology. Are we recording? Yeah, we are. Okay. Is that mic in the best place? This is the problem with me just like willy nilly doing stuff. Pull it back a little bit. Okay, is it pointed at my face? Yes, and it's right here. Can you see that? Just the tip. TV producer guy. He was trying to sell an. Uh, he was trying to sell a show called Billing. Um. Okay, dude, that's driving me nuts. Anytime I'm trying to film something, I'm like, I overthink the whole thing. I'm like, does the lighting look right? Does it sound where it needs to be? What is in my mouth? Weird. Okay. Okay. Do I need a hair light or anything? The whole breezeway is a hair light. Okay, looks cool. Kind of a split toning look. Whatever. In the reflection there, you can see a tangerine tree that was replaced by the breezeway plond. Plond? Plond? Um, my dog's... Sparky, not Sparky. My dog Astro used to climb that tree to another airplane. This is the problem with being right by John Wayne Airport. It's like nonstop air traffic. I, I wish I could like uh, get the city to not allow helicopters to fly over my house. That would save a lot of editing time. Either that or I'd like build a soundproof booth around the breezeway. These fucking cars. Is this the episode for Friday? I don't know, this is a fun one. Okay, because you made it all the way to the end of the video, I wanna take you outside into my backyard for a little bit of urban archeology. span Right over here by my car is this. There they are, the original diamonds from the Bamboo Bend Breezeway Bar build. That's alliteration. Thought you'd like to see that. Yeah, they're not dead. Well, they're disheveled right now, but they'll be put back together eventually and maybe Maybe they'll end up on this wall here or something. We'll see. Okay, thanks for watching the show.